so we just wrapped up watching the state of play PlayStation demos, what have you, trailers. Overall, it was a good show. Much better than Nintendo's show. Obviously, the rubber meets the road with the gameplay and the actual experience, so we'll see. And there were some really good stuff they showed for Nintendo today. A couple, I like Bayonetta. Uh, I thought, uh, what was the first thing? Uh, Fire Emblem looks great. But on the whole, I think Sony really just came with some really good content today. Uh, and it looked great. And obviously they closed with God of War. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that first. Let me let me show you just to give you an idea, because I don't do this kind of, you know, hamming it up for a camera. I don't do any of that shit. I'm, I'm, I'm genuine. So mostly when I watch a trailer, uh, you don't really hear from me. I'm just kind of watching the trailer. Then I'll talk about it. But this footage right here, this is us streaming it. And this was the end of it. And I just want to this is my genuine response to the trailer. Not because it is written. We okay. make our own death. That looks awesome. That looks great. That looks great. That looks so good. I'm in. So again, the idea that, you know, I, I had been pretty not negative, but I had, you know, people thought it was negative, but I'd been like, no, you know, I'll, I'll play the new God of War. I loved God of War 2018, but I'm not like chomping at the bit or anything because what they've showed so far kind of looks like, you know, more to the same, which is not bad because the 2018 version was fucking awesome. Um, however, this is the first trailer, and let's just go through it a little bit. This is the first trailer I have seen from them um, that actually made me give two shits and actually made me excited for it. So they open it up showing a controller. I don't give a fuck about that. I am not going to buy a controller. I, it's not, not for me. Not for me. You enjoy that shit. Uh, and I thought this was it. I'm like, really? This is what you're showing us? But then they go into the trailer, and 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 I I here's what I'll tell you. So the gameplay of Ragnarok, Max Ankar, who did effects in the game, has said to us, the story is much better. The gameplay is much better than 2018's. I'm inclined to believe him, A, because he's trustworthy, and B, because we're seeing some of that start to bear fruit, that, that those ideas. But I think if you just look at it from a moment-to-moment -moment gameplay trailer, it still looks like mostly more of the same, which is not bad. Don't lose your shit. Uh, because, you know, it looks like more of the same, which is what a lot of people say they want in a sequel. Great. Um, that's not, even though I will be impressed by it, that's not the main thing that impressed me. The main thing that impressed me was the overall experience looks awesome. Like the presentation, the story, the performances, the gameplay, the variety of the levels, all of those things working together really makes this into something that uh, I'm very excited to, to, to experience. Before I was like, it's not that it was out of obligation, but I was like, yeah, I'm curious. I'll see what happens in the new God of War, whatever. But in this one, Kratos comes across a little bit more likable. I like that Atreus seems to care uh, about his dad and wanting to protect him in some degree. Uh, I like at the end of this, how is that guy Tyr, the, the God of War guy from Norse, how him and Kratos kind of come together and there's this like, you know, over the top, you know, the hands meeting together and it's like, you know, Kratos kind of, re is, maybe it's Kratos' first friend, who the fuck knows, but it's cool to see that Richard Schiff of the West Wing and the Good Doctor, one of my favorite actors, I uh, was also in the my uh, 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 Superman from uh, Zack Snyder, um, he is such a good actor and he delivers these lines so great. And the whole idea about godhood, um, there's just lines in this thing that are really interesting. Like where he says uh, to Kratos, he's like, what do you know of godhood? You know, no one's ever prayed to you. No one's ever loved you. And as a guy who was on the front lines creating this character, it never really occurred to me. I knew he ended up a god. But yeah, it's kind of like, has he ever actually experienced the positivity of what it means to care about his subjects and to be 
someone that can be relied on like that and whatnot. Uh, it never occurred to me to, to explore that. And I don't know how deep they're going to explore it, but the fact they mention it at all suggests that this is a pretty interesting script. Um, I love the line at the end where he says, death can have me when it earns me. Um, I think that's just such a great line and a great line for Kratos. Um, it's, it's just all of those things. And then the variety. I mean, if you look, you know, one of the things about the last God of War it was all pretty much snow. And again, that's not knocking. Uh, I, I always got frustrated when people talked about God of War 2 being better than God of War 1. That wasn't really a knock, though. It's it's because God of War 1 has to lay the foundation or the first game lays the, the, the foundation of the house. And then you can do all the fun stuff on top of it. So, of course, they probably only had time to do a limited number of environments and bosses in the first game. And it still was, according to many people, one of the best games ever. But now you've got the snow, obviously. Um, you've got this um, uh, environment where, hang on, let me show you. You've got this uh, kind of celestial spacey thing, which kind of reminds me of when Kratos fought the clones and tried to save his family in the first God of War, which is pretty cool. Uh, you've got uh, jungles for the first time, which is awesome to see variety like that. Um, and then I think you also have some like I this looks like uh, temples or hell or something. So the idea of actually going on a bigger adventure and having a lot more visual variety, that's awesome to see. Um, and then, of course, it, you know, the beard still looks terrible. I hate the fucking beard. Um, but all of this really does come together uh, as a trailer. Uh, and underwater, uh, hopefully they have some underwater shit. I don't know if they will. This I thought was amazing. I don't know if this is gameplay like Atreus. It, points in the game or any time can turn day to night kind of like a you know and it affects gameplay like the monsters are tougher at night but they give more experience or whatever or this is just a point in the story but it's a very cool idea it's a very mythic idea um avatar shows up i don't know what that's about um this was just great and 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 what i loved about it is it really oh and this the ending are you shitting me i love this where these things meet look at that boom and they just hang in the air Zooms in, there's a whole little mini game. Um, but I, I, it's it's rare. Usually with Sony trailers or any video game trailers, the stories tend to be uh, rote. They like I remember looking at Horizon for Ben West, and I was like, okay, my takeaway was not Aloy and what she's. I don't give a fuck. It's just very traditional stuff. Uh, Say so even go, uh, you know, which the graphics was my takeaway, and the bosses were my takeaway. When I saw Shishima, I was which is one of my favorite games. I looked at it and I said, "The fantasy that I've been sold via cinema is my takeaway." But the actual story of Jin Sakai in the trailer was just like, "Okay, he's get revenge, save his people, whatever." So, you know, this is one of the very rare video game trailers that you watch it and as an experience you want to have, as a story you want to experience and be part of, it genuinely seems compelling like as a piece of narrative. And that's exceptionally rare in video games, um, at least my experience. So I look at this and I go, I genuinely want to play this because I want to not just see what happens, but I want to be involved in what happens. So hats off to Santa Monica. Beep. Um, like I said, never doubted Eric, always had and continue to have faith in Eric. Um, but boy, it's cool to see if this is indicative of the game that will be coming out in a couple of months. Boy, it's cool to see uh, him kind of step into that role and just fucking smash it. So uh, and the team, of course, as well. And the writers, it's not all one person, as I always point out to you guys. But uh, he's leading the charge and he should be happy if this is reflective of what the game is. Um, boy, it's great. Looks really great. First time I've been excited for it. So uh, there you go. Uh, Sony uh, State of Play was today, and this was uh, the end of the showcase. And boy, showcase, State of Play. Uh, good stuff, man. Be well. Talk to you soon.